the Intersport Arena in Linz, Austria, the 2006 Generali Ladies Linz. Championship Sunday here on the Tennis Channel, Maria Sharapova taking on Nadia Petrova in an all-Russian championship match. I'm your host, Leif Shagas, alongside our expert color commentator, Katrina Adams, a veteran of the Sony Ericsson WTA Tour. And excitement in the air is, uh, again, this year, two Russians square off for a title. And the U.S. Open champion, Maria Sharapova, she's in the hunt for the year-end number one. And this will go a long way to securing that spot for her. Well, what a great week Maria Sharapova has had. She's had some tough opponents here, and she's gotten through some tight situations. But she is in top form here at the end of the season. She's looking to win back-to-back -back titles in consecutive weeks for the first time. But standing in her way is Nadia Petrova, who is putting together perhaps one of the best weeks of her career. She has come through so convincingly in her matches, and uh, she's dangerous as the defending champion. Well, Nadia Petrova is playing with so much confidence this week, and as you said, she's been breezing through her matches. She's very comfortable on this court here in this arena. She is the defending champion, and for her to win that title today, beating Maria Sharapova would be a huge task. Well, here's a look at Maria Sharapova, just a teenager at 19 years of age, originally out of Siberia. The story is uh, well documented about her move to Bradenton, Florida with her dad, Yuri. And uh, what a great season she is having. Her second Grand Slam title at the U.S. Open and some Tier 1 titles as well. She, she seems to play her best tennis at the biggest events. Well, she knows where to peak, that's for certain, in her performance. And last week, winning Zurich was the last Tier 1 and coming into this, going into the Tour Championships. That's another big tournament. Yeah, she's uh, building momentum at the right time of the year, this fall indoor season. She has not uh, really distinguished herself until this year at this time of the year. But on this Deco Turf hardcourt, she has played well. A couple of tight matches against Ivanovic and Patty Schneider. Schneider, a finalist from last year. So uh, she's uh, showing signs that she'd like to win this title. Well, she hasn't dropped a set, but she's had some tight sets. And, and those are some sets where she had the lead and was had difficulties closing them out. I don't think she can afford to get in that situation today against Nadia Petrova. Yeah, she served well, except for a couple of those moments when she was trying to close out. A few double faults crept into her play, but overall, she's been playing wonderful tennis. And uh, I think the surface and the conditions suit her play. Well, she loves a fast surface, and obviously she likes the deco turf after winning the U.S. Open. But it's indoors. There's no elements to bother her. She's got a consistent toss with her serve. She moves extremely well. And this is the type of atmosphere that she enjoys playing in. And so does Nadia Petrova, who... Uh, we said in our Open, won her first title here in Linz last year. And at 24 years of age, this is clearly her best season. Five titles. What a remarkable year it has been for this Russian player, Petrova. I think she's always been in the shadow of Dementia and Miskina and Kuznetsova. But now she's really coming into her own and trying to defend for the first time. Well, I think it's the situation of her finding her own game style. And... She won her first title here a year ago, and since then she hasn't looked back once she's been in finals, except for losing to Moscow a couple weeks ago. Yeah, she really played well at the Kremlin Cup, perhaps ran out of gas in that final against Chakvatadze, but look at the run she has had here. She's lost just nine games. I mean, this is uh, some very special tennis she's producing, and she, I think she believes she can win this title, knock off Sharapova, even though she has a losing record against her. Well, she's perhaps the fresher of the two, both physically and mentally, because she's had some easy results, and Sharapova has struggled. But for Petrova, she knows she's got to come out of the gates running. Well, Petrova's played well, but so has Sharapova, and uh, she needed to be at her best taking on Patty Schneider yesterday, the Swiss star in the semifinals here in Linz. And Sharapova had some chances to make it a little bit easier on herself, but she struggled, finally closed it out 5-5. Five and five. Absolutely. She finished with a, a beautiful ace, but did have some double faults early on, and, and she was serving for the game in the, set, in the, in the first set, but Schneider was too tough and, tried, and came back pretty well. Petrova took on uh, Nicole Vatasova, who's also had a fine fall season. We saw her play well in Moscow. Petrova had no problem. Three games she lost. No, well, she breezed yesterday. Everything was automatic off of the racket of Petrova. Vatasova not at her best. And you can see what a tough draw this was from the quarterfinals on. Plenty of 
Great young players distinguishing themselves. Sharapova and Petrova, though the best of them here, and they'll play for a trophy here in Linz, Austria here today. Well, when you look at that draw, one's has to, the tournament has to be happy. The top four seeds made it to the semifinals and then the top two in the final. That doesn't happen week after week. Now here's a reminder of our top eight seeds. You can see how strong it was. Chak Vatadze, winner of the Kremlin Cup. She was the seventh seed, an indication of uh, just how tough it is here in Linz. And her Sharapova making her debut in Linz. And here she is playing off for the trophy. Nice prize money at stake. That's right. I mean, it, it is great to be on the court on the final Sunday. <laughs> and with good reason. You hit, well, you hit Sunday, you've got a lot of tennis in you, you're filled with confidence, and uh, you know at the end of the day you're going to be rewarded. Not only with ranking points, but certainly uh, some U.S. dollars. Well, these two uh, know each other pretty well. And uh, Sharapova, the clear edge. Last meeting uh, was at the Australian, but Sharapova was nearly lost in that opening set. Petrova served for the set twice, was up 6-4 in that tiebreaker, but Sharapova found a way to win. And that's what she continues to do consistently, as we've seen this week and throughout her career, especially this year in 2006. When her back has been against the wall, she's been able to pull out her best. Well, this should be a great final. The top two seeds, an all-Russian affair. It's Sharapova versus Petrova. The Generali Lady Lynn's title is at stake. Championship Sunday here in Linz, Austria. Maria Sharapova taking on Nadia Petrova. Petrova, 24 years old, out of Moscow. We'll start it off. Fifteen love. Yeah, Sharapova, her matches this week, really distinguished because of her heavy ground strokes, tremendous depth. And that'll be a challenge for Petrova today, who's played well from the back of the court, but can break down, particularly on that forehand side, as she did there. Well, one thing's for certain, I don't think Petrova can win this match from the baseline. She has to incorporate getting to the net whenever possible and looking for those opportunities to play inside the court. Yeah. She's such a wonderful volleyer, great transition game when she does move forward. Chris Petrova has served so beautifully this week. She'll need a lot of first serves today. Beautiful control of that point. Sharapova just really redirecting the ball well, making Petrova really scramble. Well, she tried to get in behind the serve. She had a volley, but missed it badly in the bottom of the net. So Sharapova, a break to start off this championship match. Let's take a look at Cat's keys. Well, Sharapova needs to serve well, and I mean when she's serving for the set or up a break, she's got to be able to convert. Didn't do that well yesterday. Play inside the court. That's where she dictates play and break down the forehand of Petrova as we see her forcing a few of those shots early on. 
The Trover also needs to serve well. Get those first serves in. Dictate play, meaning trying to move forward and finish at the net whenever possible. I'm sure Sharapova is thinking, you know, I have to keep Petrova off the net. Can Petrova find some short balls to perhaps introduce that transition play? You can see even on that backhand, the way Sharapova moved up to the line, really got her body weight behind it. And that's where she's so forceful off the ground when her ground strokes are penetrating. Fifteen all. Oh. Nice serve Thompson. right at the right hip 30, of Petrova. 15. And for Petrova, it's not too often that she looks up at an opponent, but Sharapova has the height advantage, a couple inches taller than Petrova. Unforced error on the back end, and Sharapova respects Petrova. You know, she says about her game, she has a big game with a big serve. And anytime you play someone who brings that physical play to the court, you have to be very wary. I think Sharapova knows not only how important this match is, but what it's going to take to get through it today. Well, Sharapova has a, a big game with a big serve as well. So, <laughs> you know, in certain situations, their games mirror one another. It's just that Sharapova has more experience and a little more options with, with the way she controls the point from the baseline. Yeah, and there's a good look at uh, Sharapova's serve. Very effective. So two love for the top seed. Well, the eight spots in the Sony Ericsson WTA Tour Championships have been confirmed. Martina Hingis and Kim Kleisters secure the number seven and eight spots. And of course, Patty Schneider, she had a chance, but she needed to get through the championship here and it didn't happen for her. No, it's always tough when it comes down to the last tournament or two of the season with so much pressure to get in. Beautiful passing shot from Sharapova. And Petrova wants to find herself at the net, but she's gonna have to get no, there a little bit better than that way. Short reply from Sharapova and Petro um, from Sharapova and Petrova didn't do enough with that approach shot. Oh, beautiful. types of points that are evident that Petrova cannot hang with Sharapova from the baseline, trying to win in, in the rallies. Yeah, and Sharapova is just seeing the ball so clearly, hitting it right in the center of the strings. Angle and pace. And you're wondering where Petrova is going to win her points. Oh. Off the unforced <laughs> errors. Yeah, and that really is one of the questions, isn't it? I mean, if Sharapova maintains this level, I don't think Petrova can get into this match. It'll be very difficult for her to get into this match because she won't have any rhythm 
or consistency of winning points back to back. She five, went after five, it. Five. The one thing for Petrova, she's been Certainly serving not. so well all week, but she hasn't faced a returner like Sharapova all week. Sharapova has a much better reach than any of the players that she's played and a lot more control and firepower coming off of those returns. Oh. That's yeah, a good it. serve. Drives. Now, this is the sign of a confident player, isn't it? That she's finding ways to win with what she does well, and a lot of it is the first serve. You see, there's a situation nice right there. It's a very good serve from Petrova, but it came back quicker than she delivered it. And Sharapova put herself Jeez. in a, a finishing, a winning position as her father and coach on the left, Yuri. Sharapov looks on, and Michael Joyce, her hitting partner. Four times. Petrova. Beautiful serve. Now well, that's a way to play yourself onto the board. Some good first serves. Last year in Linz, Nadia Petrova was playing off for her first championship against Patty Schneider. She was able to get the breakthrough. She lost her first four career finals. And finally she's able to win her title. Uh, what an amazing feeling that was for Nadia Petrova to finally break through, win that first title. And it was really the start of something amazing for her as she started off 2006 in Doha in February with the title and moved throughout the season, attaining five championships this year, looking for her sixth title. Yeah, and that's a real example, isn't it, of a player just suddenly relaxing and putting it together. and. Uh, Part of that is dealing with the pressure, and now, you know, she just said, hey, I can do this. Well, she feels now that every time she steps on the court, she can win. And that's an important feeling to have, especially when you're coming into the weekend matches, the semis and the finals, and then even stepping out here against Sharapova. She's saying, look, I feel I can win. I'm playing well. I've been consistent. It's going to come down to the better, better player today. Yeah. And really, who makes the, less, the least unforced errors? Petrova able to finally hold serve, and she did it with some very aggressive play. She needs to be consistent. She needs to be aggressive. It's a tall order today against uh, a red-hot Maria Sharapova, but Petrova's at her best as well. I like the way Sharapova really took her time there for that first serve delivery. Didn't get the toss right the first time and just readjusted herself. You never really see her rushing on the court. She goes, th she goes through all of her rituals in between points.
surprising. Awesome. Now that underspin backhand is really something that Petrova has been adding to her repertoire. And it's a nice way to break down the pace. Although that last one found its way to the net, but it, it's been a useful play for her. It's, it's a good change up against any of these big ground stroke hitting players out here. And for Petrova, she does have the talent and the ability to use the slice. Patty Schneider uses it a lot. And it can be a very effective shot when used in the right moments. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, that can be effective as well. I think Justin Ennard-Arden may have the best underspin backhand 40, in the 50. game when she is countering. Although Moresmo has a nice one, and uh, I think these one-handed backhands are showing that they can make some moves against these two-handers. Uh, Sharapova is the one <laughs> making the move post U.S. Open, undefeated. That's going back to August. It's a good little stretch. And it shows that even after taking time off, you can come back and still be on top of your game. Well, she's such a determined competitor, particularly from the back of the court. Moving the ball around so well. The Generali Ladies Linz were in Austria, and it is Championship Sunday. Maria Sharapova squaring off against Nadia Petrova. Petrova looking to defend this title. Can she defend for the first time in her career? Chris Maria Sharapova serving a 3 2 has other ideas. It's always a good serve. You get that first serve right at the body. Jam your opponent, especially if they've got the two-hander. can be very effective. And then you open up the wings of the angles. Let's first serve. Well, Sharapova set herself up for that, just made the error. It was a good get from Petrova, just to get that serve back in play. The swing volley. It's been a devastating play for Sharapova. I just find it amazing of how she finishes with her follow through over her head and is so effective with it. That one she came across her body, but as she moves forward here. Look at this. Racket, <laughs> the racket head finishes over her head. That's it. Thompson. Well, she's got a pretty good serve down the tee as well. What's the reason 40, for finishing 50. so high like that? I don't do it, so I couldn't, I couldn't answer that. <laughs> a lot of times it's really for the extra topspin. There's a player's flicking their wrist right at the end just to get that extra topspin. Yeah, she's Shall serving well. So that first serve carries her to 4-2. Yes, Lindsay Davenport has that high finish where she finishes well over her head, and I think that helps take the net out of play. You know, you get that extra lift. Absolutely. It's about getting under the ball. But if you're coming through the court, you have a tendency of hitting the top of the net. A lot of players use it. They use their legs to help them lift the ball over the net. But right now, in today's era, a lot of these players are actually using that follow-through. See Petrova's follow through on the forehand is a little more conventional. Out in front of her across Person her left long. shoulder. 15 long. And 
Dreisig, no. Thirty love. Look at her motion. Very straightforward, very economical. I like the toss where it's located. Incredible to be able to pull the trigger at any moment. You can see Sharapova really just stroking the ball nice and easily, moving it to a target. So then right here seven. just Third. comes up with a bomb Third. there out of nowhere. And you don't know when to expect it because she doesn't do anything different with her preparation for those shots. It's just explosion right at contact. Devastating play. She softened her up by going right down the middle. 40-30. Well, a little net court helped her out a little bit, and she readjusted her positioning. Always be on your toes. Well, that's an excellent finish herself. So Petrova's within reach, but down the break. Well, the eighth time in 2006 that the top two seeds have squared off for a title. This one in Linz, Austria. Maria Sharapova, the U.S. Open champion. She's gunning for her fifth title of 2006. Of course, Petrova already has five titles, so this would pull her even with Petrova, possibly. Of course, Justine Enardin has five titles, too. Noel Thompson. Yeah, and Petrova trying to be the leader of the pack. Love 15. By winning her sixth. And at the start of the year, if, you, if I had said that Petrova was going to win six titles, would you have believed me? No. I would have said, yeah, okay. <laughs> because she had just won her first title at the end of the year after so many attempts. So she hadn't had that track record to make me a, a believer. But I believe now. Such an effective shot. If you can move backwards to the forehand side and be able to hit a screaming winner down the line, deep in the court or in the corner, it's almost unstoppable because the next time you go over there, you can easily flick your wrist and pull it cross court. So it's hard to defend. Good shoulder turn there and held that shot to the last second. Thrizing from second. Thirty fifteen. Rise it, Biden. 
30 all. Well, it's the first double fault of the day for Sharapova. We saw yesterday once she started, <laughs> they started to roll off her racket. Let's see if she can control these unforced errors on that serve. Petrova. It's very important so that Petrova won. recognizes how she's winning points. That was a great return deep down the middle of the court, got the mid-court ball, and went to the angle afterwards. Sometimes you're going for the angle too soon off of the return, and then you're getting yourself in trouble. Sensational tennis. So after being blown out in the first two games, Petrova has settled in and finding Four ways to win points. Hustle for Petrova, but just short on the reply. I think we're starting to see both these players come into their own game, setting up their points, trying to move forward and finish at the net. Beautiful serve. It's one thing hitting the serve wide, but when you can hit it short, and why like that everything's clicking your toss your momentum going upward the use of your legs the snapping of your wrist so many different elements goes into making that a perfect serve Some tennis. Boy, both of these women really producing. They're yeah, definitely raising the bar a notch here. It's a good angle from Sharapova. Petrova got there in plenty of time. You can see her keep her eyes on her ball. Good balance here. And finds the corner. Turned things around so nicely. She was on the wrong end of a lot of these rallies, but 40, she's winning the majority of them. What's, yeah. she, what's she doing differently? Well, she's getting her weight behind the ball, and she's penetrating these shots through the court. Early on, they were all falling around the service line, which was allowing Sharapova to step up and dictate play. Now she's getting some depth behind it. her best tennis and for the first time today she has a lead in the game score 5-4 Petrova
Petrova. Nadia Petrova moving ahead 5-4 here in the first set. And Maria Sharapova feeling the pressure now of the score against her. She needs to hold her serve to save this set. Wow. No, Thompson. Trova can do no wrong right now. I love 15. You see, this serve was really right on the racket of Petrova. She read it well, got there early. Easy reply. Petrova applauding her racket to the serve. It's a nice slice down the tee. Forehand, so beautiful, and there's an inside out winner. Well, that's her best Christine forehand, is that inside out winner, and, and that's what a lot of players don't realize. If you're going to go to the player's weakness, you can't hit it down the middle of the court. These girls like to hit that inside out ball. It's moving them to their forehand out wide is where they have the most difficulty. Sharapova has at least created that angle flick to keep her in the points. That's beautiful penetration from Nadia Petrova. Great combination. 15-4. And look what it's got there. Yeah, this is a stunning move. Sharapova up 4-2. And suddenly, Petrova set points. She put that one very close to the line, but she was in control in the rally. I always enjoy watching Sharapova control the point from the middle of the court. Finding herself in position to move forward on these short balls.
Sharapova. Well, Sharapova is able to escape trouble. Two set points down. No doubt some nervous moments for her dad and her coach. Well, they like that fight in Sharapova there after being down those set points. She got some beautiful first serves in, and the first set point that she saved was the one where she controlled the point yeah. off of the ground. Petrova didn't play bad points. Sharapova just uh, able to get to five all in the end. That was a tentative backhand from Petrova. It's a good return from Sharapova, but Petrova was there in plenty of time. It just looked like her shoulders raised a little bit before contacting that ball. No I love third. Sharapova doing some good work off the second serves and she moves forward. That's an aggressive yet safe return playing cross court over the low part of the net. Momentum swings in tennis. Sharapova just moments ago down set points, and now she has some break points to get to 6 5. Big serve from Nadia Petrova. That's her bread and butter, butter serve down the T in the ad court. Double Sharapova. fault from Petrova, and it's Sharapova who reestablishes that break advantage. Sharapova. Maria Sharapova in the championship match here at the Generali Ladies Linz. As by virtue of her play this week, she'll move to number two in the rankings. Passing Justine Enenardin. And I think she has Amelie Moresmo in her sights as well. Chris Moresmo has been atop the rankings now for 32 straight weeks. This is Sharapova serving for the first set. We've seen the last couple of days where for Maria, she was serving for the sets and struggled a little bit and let her, opponent, her opponents back in. But when she's been down set points, like she has been against Petrova, if you don't take advantage of them in the first go around, she pretty much elevates her game and shuts you down to, and does not give you that opportunity again. Oh, well done. Petrova predetermined that she was going to be aggressive off of that return. 15 all. Beautiful return down the line, moving forward behind it for the finish. Oh. 
Let for serve. Drive well, unforced error has really been troubling for Sharapova in this opening set. Check out the tennischannel.com for news and highlights, the latest tennis information. The tennischannel.com. We also have rankings, standings, anything you want to know about our sport. Oh, what a shot from Petrova. She had a small margin of error there, and she just threaded the needle with this passing shot. Good penetration from Sharapova. Perfect approach shot. So now it's Petrova's turn with some break points. Can she force a tie break? opportunity Einstein. second serve Deuce. Sure good serve though kind of jammed her yeah and I think crossed her up too by going to the forehand remember the last time she went to the backhand Petrova was aggressive did not make the adjustment four tiles show the home well placed Sharapova, former world number one. She wins the opening set, 7-5. Seven 7-5 for Maria Sharapova. Some numbers that uh, show a fairly even set. Both players with opportunities, and uh, Petro will probably be upset that she missed out. Yeah, because those numbers are very even. Better serving percentage from Sharapova, but what happened better there was the conversion of the break point opportunities for Maria versus one for five for Petrova. Well, remember, they're uh, experimenting with on-court coaching here in Linz. So Michael Joyce is down courtside. Let's eavesdrop uh, a little bit on what he's, he's having to say to Maria. And uh, that's about it. Just stay confident. Just keep hitting. Make sure that on the second serve you, just, you get the return. Okay? And that's it. All right? Stay tough. And you got your banana? Yeah. All right. Come on. certainly touched on a few things that she's done well. The good aggressive play on the second serve. Yeah, but he's also saying make sure you make that return. Don't go for too much. Time. Be aggressive, but make sure you give yourself a good margin of error. And uh, Maria always having her banana <laughs> in her bag on the sideline. You always have to smile at that comment after the U.S. Open. Where, uh, 